Here are five quick tests to establish the quality of a watercolour pad that you might have bought and you're wondering if you got a bargain. The first thing you want to look at is the cover. What indications do they give you on the cover? For example, they'll tell you the weight of the paper, how many pieces of paper in there, who it was made by, but if it doesn't tell you the ingredients, it's wood pulp and it's going to slowly yellow over time. It also doesn't tell you the surface so you can assume it's probably cold press because that's the most common type of surface. The second test that you can do is just start painting on the surface of the paper. Use a brush you're really familiar with and see whether or not it behaves in a similar way to your other types of watercolour paper that you already use. Does the brush glide beautifully over the paper? And using a brush that you already know how it behaves will really help in this regard. I'm using my big mop brush there, and this cheap paper, it only cost me $10, is behaving absolutely beautifully. I'm also going to use my tiny little liner brush. This is what I use all the time, this tiny liner brush. It is absolutely brilliant, and I'm really familiar with how it behaves, so again, I'm using something that I know what its behavior is like and again this little brush is doing brilliantly so the paper is doing really well. Third test, masking tape. How beautiful does it look if you can put a border around any of your paintings but if you get masking tape and you go to remove it and uh, it takes off some of the surface of your paper that's a bit of a problem it can so ruin completely any painting so this paper has failed the masking tape test I know you can put it on your hand I know you can reduce the tack and then do that again uh, but I could not be bothered doing such things so I just won't be putting masking tape on this cheap paper I'm now painting or more wet type of paint because I want to see whether or not if the paper if the paint is more watery is it going to handle it just the same masking fluid this is a great test for any sort of watercolor paper see how it glides on see how more importantly how does it remove this is the Holbein's masking fluid pen it's awesome I'm going to paint over the masking fluid so that when I remove it at in a moment when the paint and the masking fluid are dry then I can test whether or not the masking fluid is going to remove any of the surface of the paper. A lot of wet in wet there I'm glazing over a bits of paint and you'll see a little bit of a problem occurring already it starts to peel this is also often what happens on cheap watercolor paper it can handle one layer but it can't necessarily handle the second layer I'm just going to finish there painting over the masking fluid so that I will get a beautiful thin line at the end of this lovely little exercise and that's what this paper is going to be used for I know it already the final test is glazing so I'm grabbing some more paint with my quill brush and I'm glazing over those leaves and at first you think oh it's glazing over beautifully it's going really well but it, I'm just zooming in slowly there so you can see the actual effect it has gone into the fibers of the paper and it's making really weird marks it cannot handle a second layer very common in cheap watercolor paper the sizing has been removed or washed away with the first layer of paint I'm just removing some of the masking fluid while the paint and the paper are still wet and while the masking fluid is rem is able to be removed you can see that it immediately damaged the paint again a typical sign of a cheap watercolor paper. Another little tip that I'm just going to throw in here is have a look at the back of your field paper. Is the paint coming through to the back and it is just a tiniest bit, not as bad as other papers but uh, it is. So now the paint and the masking fluid are dry and I am just slowly rubbing off the masking fluid with my finger and this paper has passed this test. It allows me to remove all of the masking fluid quite easily. You can actually use a masking fluid eraser, uh, which is much harder on the paper. So I chose my finger to give this paper the best chance that it could have. And I'm just slowly removing it off. So this was called economical watercolor paper. I love that name because it really was really cheap. 
i suggest to you that you could leave your examples in the paper in the pad because then you when you go to look for this pad later on you'll know and remember how it behaved yes it could take masking fluid no it couldn't take masking tape and it definitely hated it definitely got ruined when the masking tape was being removed thank you so much for watching me guys i really appreciate your support and if you got anything out of the video please give me a thumbs up and i'll see you next time see ya